You don't have to settle for what's going on in America today. You don't have to ever settle for what gets pushed out upon you in terms of debt, poverty, just the same old, same old. Everybody else does it. I want to encourage you once again to remind you that you and I have this thing called free will. You and I had the free will to break down these barriers, to get rid of these doubts, disbeliefs, to get rid of the fact that you think that failure is a bad thing. Actually, it's the most important thing for you. Actually, success is just failure turned inside out. Now, here's the thing about free enterprise, entrepreneurship, and capitalism, is you're free to buy, you're free to sell, free to win, but at the same time, free to fail. But first things first, though, we had to understand how money works. I reminded my favorite scripture in the Bible once I came across it, because oftentimes people look at the Bible as a, as a book of weird scriptures and quotes and hymns. The Bible in Ecclesiastes says that money answereth all things. And going back to my favorite scripture as it relates to money and us having the power to do something about our current circumstances is Deuteronomy 8.18, saying that God has put things in place for you to have the power to create wealth. Now, we have the power to create wealth. It just doesn't land on a lap. We have the power to do something about it if we use and invoke that power. It's just going to land in our bank account. You and I have to do something about it. So to understand money better, let's go to the beginning. What is money? Money is defined as a medium of exchange that is centralized, generally accepted, recognized, and facilitates transactions of goods and services. Now, as it relates to money, here's where things get weird. We are more useful if we're just content by being used by the elite and the government and its tax system, if we do nothing about our current circumstances and decide just to be saying, you know, I'm okay being part of the middle class. They're not rich, but they're not poor. They're right there in the middle, which makes them mediocre. And the sad part about that situation is that it's easier for you to be controlled in that situation. I mean, think about it. How many people today would say that they love their job? Matter of fact, is that more people on Monday morning at eight o'clock in the morning have the most heart attacks in the country at that time frame. How many times have you felt that pit in your stomach on a Sunday night because you're going to a job, you just can't stand that Monday morning? Well, that's what happens to people. That Monday morning, you go to a job that has them overworked, that's an underpaid, that they're generally not appreciated, that they're undervalued. They got the mortgage, they got the rent, they got the car payment, they got the student loan payment, they got the credit cards, they got the kids they got to feed because they haven't understood yet to think for themselves on how money works. Now think about this, the three biggest things that most people buy in their entire life is what? A house, a car, and college education. Now, with that being said, do most people in a multicultural middle class buy this with cash straight out, or do they finance it? You and I, we spend money on things that the elites create, but here's the issue. Most people in the multicultural middle class buy those things by borrowing money first from the financial institutions that the elites and the government own. And again, who benefits from you being financially illiterate? Who benefits from you and I not knowing how money works? The government, the banks, and the elites. And by the way, what happens when they get your money? You know what they do too as well? They gather your money and they lend it to other entrepreneurs. They lend it to other people so they can double, triple, and quadruple what they borrowed from you by loaning to other folks because you're a consumer versus being an investor. And by the way, think about how the media calls many people in America. Consumer spending is up, consumer spending is down. Consumers, 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 they call you and I consumers. You ought to look at that and take offense to that. I'd rather be called a producer. I'd rather be called an investor. I'd rather be called an innovator because now I create value. And guess what? The people that enjoy the best things out of life they're the ones that create value. Now here's the sad part. While your money, hopefully sitting in the bank, guess how much more valuable that dollar is the next day or the next month or the next week? It's getting less and less, why? Because that money is earning an interest rate less than inflation, and guess what the elites are doing? They're taking your money and earning way above what inflation is costing people. If they're borrowing at four, they're earning eight. If they're borrowing at eight, they're earning at 12. If they're borrowing at 12, they're earning at 18, 20%. They're leveraging money in a way, instead of consuming it, but to create more cash from the money that they're flowing that, that back to currency again. And that's the system that you and I need to use. So therefore, we can rig the system in our favor versus just only the system of just the elites, the government, and the financial institutions.